Hey guys, welcome to our weekly Friday video and sometimes we have a bonus video on Tuesday. But today we're checking out the Dell Optiplex 9010 Small Form Factor PC. I bought this machine last year from eBay and it cost only 209 Australian dollars which converts to roughly 150 US dollars. It has an i5-3570 processor, 8GB RAM and a 250GB hard drive. In this video we will do a few upgrades. I definitely want a SSD and more RAM, but we will also upgrade the processor to an i7 and install some graphics cards. We got the GD1030, 1050 and 1050 Ti. With a power meter I measured the power consumption. We have benchmarks and I will also cover other aspects like flashing the latest BIOS and other tips and tricks. Such a machine is terrific value and with a few upgrades can be turned into a really capable machine. You might have seen this model for sale and want to learn what you can do or maybe you just bought one and you're interested in upgrades. Either way, I believe this video has you covered and hopefully answers all of your questions. Do take a look in the description. I will add some links to all the parts that I'm using in this video. On the front of the machine we have two USB 2, two USB 3, microphone and headphone jack. Here's the optical drive and here's the power button. At the back of the machine we have two PS2 ports, serial VGA, two display ports, they also carry digital audio, gigabit ethernet, we got four USB 2, two USB 3, line in and microphone input, line output. I lost the two brackets here but we're going to upgrade the video card anyway and here goes the power cord. Okay let's open the machine, we just got to pull here and lift this up. My machine has an optical drive, so we just gotta lift this up a little bit and pull it back out and then we can unplug these two cables here. Now if you don't need the optical drive, you can get one of these, which is a hard drive caddy and then you can put a two and a half inch drive uh, in here like that and install this instead of the optical drive. Now I wanna keep my optical drive, so we're gonna keep digging a little bit deeper we gotta get the hard drive out. So there's a little purple slider here. You just gotta push that to the left to unlock it. And then we can lift this up. Carefully unplug the SATA and the SATA power cable. And we can now pull the drive out uh, like so. And here we go. Here's the hard drive. So my machine came with a 250 gig hard drive. And basically you just have to pry it out from here, like so. So I would like to install an SSD, so you can purchase one of these. This is an adapter. So you insert your 2.5 inch drive inside of this adapter and it basically converts it into a 3.5 inch hard drive. And now all we have to do is insert that back into the purple uh, bracket like that. But before we continue we will have a look at the RAM and we're also gonna reapply the thermal paste. So my machine came with 8 gigabytes of RAM. We've got four RAM slots. To be sure that they are in the faster dual channel configuration uh, you can go by the colors so white and white or by the numbers one and two, three and four. The machine can take up to 32 gigabytes it uses DDR3 memory up to 1600 megahertz. Prices for DDR3 memory are pretty good. You can get a 4 gigabyte RAM kit for around $40 and a 16 gigabyte RAM kit for around $80. And now we're gonna remove the CPU cooler. We're gonna basically go in a diagonal fashion. So my unit comes with an i5-3570 from the Ivy Bridge generation. This is a quad-core processor. But this machine is also available with a faster i7-3770 and you can upgrade to that processor. All you have to do is remove the CPU cooler, clean up the old thermal paste and swap out the processor. I ran some benchmarks, we've got Cinebench R15 here and we can see a noticeable difference. Now do uh, pay note that this benchmark uh, can take advantage of uh, multiple threads, so this is like the best case scenario. In games we can also see an improvement but not that much, here the video card is most important, although modern games can take advantage of 8 threads. Also a tip, if you are upgrading to a processor, do consider the S and the T versions, these consume less power. 
Many of you are interested in upgrading the graphics card, so I've tested with a GD1030, GDX1050 and GDX1050 Ti. You have to make sure you get the low profile versions of those cards. With the GD1030, this one is good for light gaming, you might have to lower the settings and the resolutions, but it's excellent for multimedia accelerating video decoding, for example. Do make sure you get the GDDR5 version. The GD1030 is the only single slot card out of the three card we're looking at, so you can use the other slot in the machine. The 1050 is best value in my opinion. You're getting solid performance. It is a dual slot card, so it does take up both slots. And the GDX 1050 Ti, that is the best card available. It's a bit faster than the 1050 in benchmarks, but the key differentiator is really double the video memory. This one has four gigabytes of VRAM instead of two. The 1050 Ti goes for a premium because it is the best low profile graphics card you can buy. It also occupies two slots and you will not be able to use that second slot. The machine upgraded to an i7 with 16 gig of RAM and a 1050 Ti. It runs Fortnite really well. Now I'm not good at this game but it's uh, popular and uh, I can see a lot of you out there thinking of buying this machine for someone you know that is a bit younger and I think they will be very happy using such a computer as a gaming PC. Now the machine has two PCI Express slots, there's a blue one and the black one. The video card should go into the blue one, this one is a 16x slot, the black one can only do 4x. Now let's talk about the power supply, it is rated at up to 240 watts and you might think this is not enough but we will find out that this is actually plenty. So here are all the results, on the left side we've got the i5 and the i7, blue is idle, so that's very energy efficient, only around 30 watts. The orange bar is running Citibench, so that stresses the processor. So we're seeing 76 watts on the i5 and 102 watts on the i7. And then peak 3D mark, I ran all the 3D mark benchmarks and my power meter can measure the peak result. So this is the highest ever recorded power draw. And on the i5 that's 134 and on the i7 that's 158. So these are the worst case scenarios. Once you factor in that the power supply doesn't have 100% efficiency, so if you account for maybe 80 to 90% efficiency, the actual power that this uh, power supply outputs are actually even lower. Also a note regarding video cards, if you go to the NVIDIA website, they do recommend a 300 or 350 watt power supply, but this is just a rough guideline. In reality, the 1030 uses only up to 40 watts and the 1050 cards up to 75 watts. I also get comments often, well, that the PCI Express slots, they are rated at only 30 watts or something like that. Well, here I believe the manufacturers are just keeping it safe and they are assuming that you add full sticks of RAM, two expansion cards, multiple hard drives, so they're just playing it safe. The fact is that the standard for PCI Express slot in order to be certified is to be able to supply 70 watts and this machine can do this just fine. If you're really concerned about power draw, a few pro tips to save power. Stick with only two memory modules instead of four. Use only a single SSD. Do consider the S and the T series processors. They are uh, more energy efficient. Also have a look on the uh, website for your graphics card manufacturer. They usually have a tool and there might be something like an eco or green mode or you can lower the power limit. To access the BIOS or change the boot device, press F12 after turning on the machine. This is how you install Windows 10 from a USB stick, for example. You really shouldn't have to change anything in the BIOS. The default settings should work just fine. The only issue I ran into is when I upgraded the processor from the i5 to the i7. Only four cores would show up in Windows without the hyperthreading. So there's a setting in the BIOS to enable hyperthreading. And after I turned that on, the i7 was detected properly. I also upgraded to the latest BIOS. You can download it directly from the Dell support website. At the time of making this video, version A30 is the latest version and mine was on A29, so I upgraded it right away. It's straightforward, just run the program, it will reboot the machine and flash the BIOS. Wait until it's finished and you're good to go. If you want wireless, you can just add a USB wireless adapter. To get good speeds, I recommend getting an 802.11ac model with dual band support. And if you're installing a fresh copy of Windows 10, have a look if your machine has a Windows license sticker. Try that license key and it might actually work. At least it did for me when I installed Windows 10 last year.
So there you have it. The Dell Optiplex 9010 is a great value computer. Honestly, this PC has to be one of my best purchases I did in a long time. I use it pretty much on a daily basis. And while the base configuration works fine for most people, if you do a few select upgrades, you can turn this into something much more powerful. So to wrap it up, we compared the benefits of using an i7 compared to an i5. We also compared the GD1030, 1050 and the 1050 Ti and how it affects performance in games. I do believe that you should definitely be upgrading to an SSD. It's one of the best upgrades you can make to an old computer. DDR3 memory is also cheap, 8 gig around 40 bucks, 16 gig for around $80. The power supply is something I always get a lot of comments about, but just like in the previous videos with the HP Elite Small Form Factor PC, it's not an issue. But if you are concerned, you can do a few tricks. Stick with two RAM modules and use a single SSD instead of uh, platter-based mechanical hard drives. And that will guarantee that you can use an i7 and the 1050 Ti, which are the fastest options for this machine. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will see you next week with our weekly Friday video, but keep an eye out for Tuesday. Sometimes we have a bonus video. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a like and click on that notification bell. And I shall see you soon with another one.